thoughts now of the German member of the European Parliament, Hans-Olaf Henkel. He's a member of the Liberal Conservative Reformers, part of the European Conservative and Reformist Group. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for being uh, with us, uh, uh, Mr Henkel. Uh, do you think we are heading towards no deal? Well, of course, uh, <laughs> it is not unlikely, but I must agree with the previous speaker. Uh, there is an olive branch uh, sent by, the, by this particular deal to the British public for a decision. On the other hand, they were partly to blame for Brexit in the first place. Had they given Britain or Cameron at that time more autonomy over its immigration, the Brexit wouldn't have taken place in the first place. So my suggestion is that the Commission stops linking trade always to freedom of movement, offers Britain a new deal and then give Britain the chance to rethink that decision. You see, one of the problems here, as you know, is this whole question of the Irish backstop. And what uh, British Conservatives are saying is we thought we'd agreed this in December. But the way in which the European Union has chosen to interpret that backstop was not what we thought we'd agreed to, which means that as we approach the decisive agreement, it's really got to be spelt out a lot more clearly uh, than it is now, because otherwise uh, the European Union might use the backstop as a way of coming back for more. Well, <clears throat> uh, I think you're right in your assumption or your observation that the European Union is behaving unreasonably at times and I think sometimes very arrogantly. In this particular case, however, I don't see any real solution. Either you have a border between Northern Ireland and Ireland and then, uh, of course, no common market or you don't have one, but then you do need a common market or customs union. So I think there is logically no other solution. Yesterday, President Tusk talked about a Gordian knot, and he is right. And I appeal to Mr. Tusk that to behave, he should behave like Alexander the Great. He should cut this Gordian knot. He should step over his own shadow and offer Britain now a different solution when it comes to freedom of movement. This is either good for a better deal under the assumption of Brexit, but it would also be good in case Britain changes its mind because even the Brexiteers could then say, OK, we got what we always wanted without the disadvantages of Brexit. But why not just say, look, uh, we appreciate governments change, nothing can be forever, we can't have a backstop that is theoretically open forever, that the backstop would apply uh, until the end of the transition period, for example, because this is, you know, a real problem uh, for not just Mrs May, but also for the Irish Democratic Unionists who are supporting her. I have a lot of sympathy for that, but I must say, uh, and then what after two years? That's why I think extending that period by another year doesn't really help. What would help is that uh, right now, if there was no deal by tomorrow or in the next few weeks, that the European Union offers Britain more time to negotiate. So in other words, don't take this date of March 29, 2019 too serious. Uh, give a little bit more time to come up with a deal. Lay but article at the same 50. time, I think we should end parallel. Sorry? Article Actually, 50. delay Article 50. And don't forget, if... Delay Article 50, yes, exactly. By a few months, I think that will be better than no Brexit because no Brexit is a total disaster for both Britain and, by the way, also for the European Union. This is very often forgotten here that Britain is very important to the European Union. After Brexit, Britain would be the European Union's largest customer ahead of the United States, ahead of China. Uh, Britain leaving is, uh, in terms of quantity, in terms of GNP, as if 19 countries of the EU would leave at the same time. So it's time also for Brussels to be more moderate vis-a-vis -vis Britain. And they should try to do two things. Either make it possible that we have a, a reasonable deal which uh, also satisfies British industry, and then it will also satisfy the European industry, or make a deal possible for Britain which enables the Remainers to get some more 
uh, some more momentum for their own desire to have another uh, referendum in Britain, because a democracy which can't change its mind if the facts have changed and the situation has changed ceases to be a democracy. But you see, the, the problem with that, that approach is it seems to me that we will only have a, a second referendum in the event of a deal not being agreed. If a deal's agreed, uh, there won't be the political momentum, uh, conceivably, in Britain uh, to have a second referendum. Well, of course, that's for the British to decide from, for themselves. But from a, let's say, continental experience, we have ample examples. The Danish, for instance, voted three times. And when the French rejected the Lisbon Treaty, the Lisbon Treaty was changed, and then the French accepted it. So you cannot say we will ask the British voters uh, the same question until they get the right answer. The same question makes sense if the assumption has changed. So if the Brexiteers got at the end what they always wanted, for instance, more autonomy over their own immigration, then they could easily say, OK, well, under these conditions, we would like to stay in the European Union. And let's not forget many other countries in Europe, in the meantime, also agree with Britain's position on more autonomy of immigration. It's not only Poland and Hungary. It is also Denmark and Sweden and a large portion of Germany. So I would say it is worthwhile avoiding this major catastrophe. And I'm really disappointed that there are, is no statesperson, neither in Britain nor on the continent, which steps back and says, look, folks, let's take another measure. Let's look where we are and let's start from scratch. OK. Uh, Hans-Olaf Henkel, thank you very much indeed. A voice of reason there from uh, the European Parliament.